Hello everybody, my name is Randy of HLD Productions, and I am here with my very first GBID League video, or at least I think it will be. Um, this is being recorded a bit earlier than I anticipated. Hell, a lot earlier than I anticipated, but uh, not a big deal. You know, I am, uh, you know, I think I'm ready for this, but uh, anyways, just a bit of an intro. Uh, of course, again, my name is Randy of HLD Productions. I stream a lot on Twitch, do, you know, Pokemon Wi-Fi battles, and I upload a lot of you know, decent variety of Pokemon videos to the channel. For those of you who are new coming from just like, you know, if y'all are just casual fans of the GBA or if you're fans of Greg, the guy we're playing this week. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, welcome to the channel. I know you guys are probably wondering who the hell is this guy, you know? Upon, uh, you know, the announcement, people were just kind of like, uh, you know, speculating on who the hell I was and stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm definitely a bit more, you know, active on the Twitch scene. You know, I just, I'm having a lot of fun streaming there. I stream a lot of Wi-Fi battles, uh, viewer battles specifically. I do VDC Showdown. Uh, you know, I don't shiny hunt. Uh, but, you know, I don't have too much draft league experience. Uh, I was in some smaller leagues. I'll actually name them specifically because, you know, I never really set them out, you know, in my app. Um, I was in the PMU early on. Uh, it was some draft league, just like a small showdown league uh, ran by, I believe his name was Stax Daltino. Uh, I don't really, I haven't really, like, talked to him in a long time, so I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, I was in the MLP. I know Blue Rogue was in that league. He's a YouTuber as well, a bit of a smaller YouTuber. Uh, I mean, I'm small too, but, uh, he's a little bit smaller than I am. Um, I was also in the PGBL. That's probably the main one I was in, uh, just a few weeks back. It ended a few weeks ago. Uh, I did finish in the semifinals. Um, uh, I'm only saying this because I'm not sure if this information will be put out to you guys. Uh, like I said, this is being recorded early, so I have no idea. But, nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump into the, the actual video. This is the team builder. I'm not sure if this is going to be uploaded with my battle video like I normally do, or if it will be a separate video. It all really just depends on what happens. But we are facing off against Greg Later, the coach of the Los Angeles Clefable. They are probably one of the fan favorite teams in this league, for sure. Um, and this draft is just phenomenal. It's, it's just really, really good. It's just well made, in my opinion. Uh, he does have like an obvious like one flaw, I think. But honestly, what what he has, I don't think it will be that big of a deal. In all honesty, um, but uh, let's go ahead and just jump into his team. He's got the Zygarde fifty percent form, which is one of his Z move users: Celesteela, Mega Galley, Nihaligo, Sneasel, Togekiss, Alolan Marowak, Snorlax, Rotom C, which is Rotomo, Rhydon, and Galizapod, which is also one of his Z move users. Now he's got the probably one of the better Steel Dragon Fairy cores. He's got Togekiss, Steela, and Zygarde. Great, great, um, you know. Uh, great core. It's a little weak to Bolt Beam, a little more weak than uh, other cores are. Um, you know, the Fairy Dragon Steel cores, Steela being the main you know reason for that, Togekiss as well. Um, but it's definitely a, a great core in itself. A little Marowak's fantastic. I won't go much like in the detail about his teammates until I you know go into mine. Um, but yeah, like I said, this video will probably be a bit more uh, a bit more unorganized as my other uh, draft league builders because, like I said, this is being recorded early, so I'm not sure what else I might need to do with this, but um. Uh, either expect this to be a separate video the day before the battle goes up, or expect it to be, um, you know, in the same video as the battle, but I'll have a timestamp in the bottom to, like I did in my PGBL videos, that'll lead you guys straight to the, uh, to the battle, or to, like, the actual, like, video, video battle part. So, let's go ahead and jump into my team. I got Tapu Koko, Shaka Zulu, leading the way this week, rocking a, just a three attack subset. Um, ignore the IVs, this will be max 252 when it's there. Um, I just want to show it's hidden power water, just, you know. I'll just show you guys that's what I'm running. Um, so just ignore the IVs. The EV spread will be fixed as well. So just, just uh, I am running enough speed to outrun. Um, enough speed to outrun. Um, I'll just leave HP Water IV. So you guys know what it is. Um, to outrun his Galate and his Mega Galate and his Sneasel. So, I mean, if if they're like one base point slower, I could run Modest Coco. But I have to run this much speed to outrun. Uh, Galleon and Sneasel by one point, which is his fastest mon on his team, which is one of his flaws of his team. I feel like a little slow, but he's got power, so it really doesn't matter too much. I know my draft in the PGBL was pretty slow as well. Um, I'm running Z uh, Dazzling Gleam to take care of his Zygarde. That's why I'm running the Dazzling Gleam there. Uh, it's probably very obvious. Like Once we go on the team preview, he's probably going to know it's a Twinkle Tackle because I don't have much to hit it super effective. Yes, Hydreigon's a dragon type and Nido King's a. Uh, it can use Ice Beam and so can uh, Jellicent, but uh, realistically, Nido King isn't an answer when Jolly Max B Zygarde outruns my Nido King. So it's not really a real option to deal with Zygarde, realistically, at least I think. Um, I could definitely see him running like a careful set, but I'm not sure the kind of player he is. I've watched some of his videos. Um, but I'm just like not sure about his team building, especially with Zygarde. You know, it's a very unique mon. You know, 
a very great mod as well. Something I really am fearing. Um, I am running sub. I know U-turn or Nature's Madness is probably more effective. But I feel like if I'm ever in on Zygarde and I want to see if he's going to switch out to Celesteela. Because like, if I waste my Twinkle Tackle on Celesteela, I am like screwed. Like Zygarde will be a bigger issue than anticipated. Um, it's just, you know, a very threatening mod. I'm going to go ahead and leave this HP Water so you guys can actually see his HP Water. Because I don't want you guys to be like, why are you running HP Electric? That's dumb. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I just want to have sub. I think it's nice because I can sub up on stuff like Sneasel, potentially. I know you probably will have Jab, but I'm not sure if you want to burn it late. I can set up on, um, on Rotom if he's locked into, uh, like a weakened Leaf Storm, maybe. Um, I can lock in, I can, um, sub on Galissapod. Maybe Steela as well. He might have Protect on Steela, um, to block himself from, like, being able to stall terrain or, you know, having a way to block Lucha's high jump kick. It's also something I can do. I can sub on Gallade as well, because Gallade probably won't want to stay in. Gallade can eat a hit. It won't eat a single tackle, but it will eat a Dazzling Gleam or Thunderbolt and Terrain. And um, HP Water is, of course, for the Rhydon and the Alolan Marowak. Um, I did originally have Grass Knot on this, so I was completely well on Marowak, because, I mean, Cocos normally are anyway. But HP Water hits Rhydon good enough. It's a two-shot on most variants of Rhydon. Uh, I know I know, it's crazy. Two-shot, <laughs> barely, with the four times the perfected move. But Rhydon with the Eevee Light is very tanky. Um, I don't really see Rhydon coming. I have two water types. I have a Celebi and I have uh, I guess Needle King works on it too. And I guess Halucha as well, but I really don't see it coming. Like, I just don't see it. Like I can maybe see it for rocks because there's only three rockers are Nihiligo, the Marowak, and the Rhydon. So if he wants the rocks this week, he's going to have to bring one of those three. But Nihiligo is probably the most likely of the three. And if he doesn't want to run a uh, Scarf to you know, beat Coco guaranteed, he, he can do that. But um, he honestly doesn't need Scarf because, I mean, you know, it's it's tanks, you know, Coco's hits as long as it isn't a physical set. So, and actually, now that I thought of it, it could be Scarf. But um, like I said, it's just speculation more up here. So I feel like Sub can work. And uh, nothing else to explain here about Shaka Zulu. You know, Coco was a great mod for me. Hopefully it could do a lot of work. I know it can. It just, you know, it does a lot of work, you know, on paper. But, you know, one, it'll only change once I go into the battle and see what he's running and stuff like that. But um, let's go ahead and jump into the next mod, Rock Paper, the Mega Scizor. Um, I am running an SD, two attacks, roof set, light metal, a problem pre-evolution. That way I can switch into Sneasel's light low kick better. Not that it would do much anyway. It probably does like <laughs> like no damage of its life orb anyway. But, you know, it's just, you know, to not take as much damage anyway. Um, I, as you can see, I'm running enough speed. Um, nothing, really for nothing. It's just um, to counter his creepers if it's Celesteela or Marowak. Um, not that Marowak would, uh, Marowak would be faster to me if he's max speed, jolly, or adamant, uh, or actually not adamant, it'd be jolly, because adamant's 97, I think, at uh, level 50, max, max, uh, speed, um, but I am walled by Marowak anyway, so, you know, I had to make that decision, am I gonna be walled by Marowak, or am I gonna be, you know, walled more by Celesteela, I mean, I'm walled by Celesteela anyway, but I, I just, I needed a superpower to have another way to deal with Snorlax, because Snorlax can actually do a good amount to my team, assuming he brings, like, a curse set, or even, like, a, I want to say Belly Drum, but that's not really a realistic option. Uh, Nihiligo, Trick Room, plus Snorlax could be a thing. Like, I can't rule it out, but it's de it probably won't happen. It just probably won't. Um, I mean, I say it now, but, I mean, it could. Lola Marowak's fast, but, I mean, I don't know if that's the way he'll play it, you know? I just, oh, whoops. I just don't know if that would happen, you know? I'm just kind of speculating at this point. I don't know why it's coming to me now when we're literally going to battle, like, in half an hour but anyways uh this is just a decent set late game cleaner uh it's gonna be my dedicated switch into sneasel like 100 percent of the time uh it's a way to you know check night Haligo at any point in the game even if he's like the babiri berry i believe it's what it's called for the steel type um he could take a hit but uh i don't see him running hp fire it's just a waste of a move slot in my opinion he's probably gonna have dual stab thunderbolt to hit empoleon and then his last move might be psychic to deal with nido king maybe um uh, that's just a speculation it could be dazzling lame to for sure get a kill on hydreigon not 100 percent sure still but um, obviously, it all depends on his move set. If he's, uh, he could be rocks as well. So that's something I will keep in mind. It's just, you know, my dedicated answer to Nia Haligo and Sneasel at all times. Togekiss, it could pressure Togekiss as well, um, depending on his spread, of course. And of course, it could be a somewhat decent check to Rotom C, uh, which probably would have HP fire. But um, you know, Rotom C is something that I could see coming as well, taking advantage of my terrain. But um, yeah, I mean, that's it for Scizor. It also deals with Ghostapod as well. It can set up on the Ghostapod pretty easily. Uh, next one we have is Ray the Hydreigon. This nickname is probably going to change because it used to be Hydreigon, like a pun. It used to be like an E at the end. But um, I'm kind of looking for a new nickname for this. If you all have suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. 
But uh, I'm running the Assault Vest set. Now, this mod was like a complete mystery for me. I don't know what item... I didn't know what item to run on this thing. Like, I considered Yachi for Sneasel. Um, but I figured Assault Vest was decent because... Uh, if Nihiligo gets a little out of control, and let's say I don't want to, you know, go into Sizzle right away, or for some idiotic reason I let it die, uh, this could, you know, somewhat check Nihiligo. I do have Earthquake, which can obliterate it. I'm sure he'll expect it. Uh, I just, you know, I feel like I can maybe, you know, lure him in if I, he switches into Dark Pulse. You know, uh, I did consider running a full physical set with Head Smash to deal with Togekiss as well, but I, he would be able to read that pretty easily if he saw me go for Crunch or like a, like a Dragon Claw. I don't get Dragon Claw, but like if he saw me go for like a Crunch or like a a U-turn or something. Not necessarily U-turn, but... I don't know. Just, like, Crunch specifically. He would know that on physical and probably wouldn't stand with Togekiss. Because he does... I'm sure he knows, you know, Hydreigon's uh, move pool with Stone Edge and Rock Slide and Head Smash and stuff like that. But... Excuse me. I just figured I needed, um... You know, a safe, dark stab move that actually did a lot of damage as opposed to Crunch. It could deal with Alolan Marowak. It one-shots most variants of Alolan Marowak. Um, he doesn't have really great dark resist outside of Togekiss. So that's also something to note on his team. So if I can eliminate Togekiss early or get it extremely low, then this thing can actually do a little bit of a chip to his team uh, for something like Coco or my uh, Roberto, the High Lucha, which is the next mod on my team, as you guys can see. Uh, Flamethrower, of course, is for the Celesteela and the Sneasel, in case Sneasel doesn't have, like, it's really slow. But I, I don't think I can live an Icicle Crash unless it's, like, I, I could probably live a non-Life Warps hit or a non-Ban hit. That's something to note. Draco Meteor is to nuke the Zygar, nuke Scalate as well. It can nuke anything as long as like Togekiss isn't there, uh, so that's there's that. As I said, Quake is for Nihiligo, so that's pretty good there. Nothing else to say. It's also a good switch in the Rotom Sea, also. Something else to note. Next we have Roberto, the Halucha, named after my brother Robbie. He's, you know, he's also with me on this channel. He's more here for the... He's here more for the TCG openings. And Halucha was his, like, original mascot for the channel, as you can tell him by a banner. So... Now this set here, this is pretty crucial. This mod can actually do a ton of work to his team. I know I've been saying that about like every mod, but uh, this is actually 100% true here. Uh, it's my Snorlax answer. Electric Heat, of course, it boosts its defense stage by one. When terrain is up, causing its item to you know be used. Unburden to activate doubles my speed, which is fantastic. I don't need speed investment at all to, to outspeed his team. Uh, at plus two speed, or I guess plus two speed. Yeah, it's plus two speed. Um, it outruns his fastest scarf mod being the Sneasel. So that's pretty good there. I don't need any speed to outrun that. Like, even, like, I would have to run, like, minus speed IVs to be, like, one point higher than Sneasel. I'm up, I'm up by, like, a few points, I think. So that's good. Uh, this added bulk gives me a chance to set up on mods I normally couldn't set up on. Like, I could set up on Togekiss. I could set up on Celesteela. I could set up on Zygarde. I could set up on, uh, on, um, Nihiligo. I Actually, no, I probably couldn't. I could set up on Rhydon as well and Galosipod and Nalax. So that's really, really good for me. So if I set up like one SD, I'll be in pretty good shape. Dream Punch will allow me to get HP back, so I will stay out of range of an Ice Shard. Or maybe a Scarf. Well, not Scarf Sneagle. We already know that. Like a Banned Ice Shard. Um, low Kick is fantastic in this in this matchup here because Snorlax and Celesteela are the main mons I would need High Jump Kick for. Um, not necessarily Lax, but um, Celesteela. But Low Kick is only going to be doing, I believe, 10 damage lower because High Jump Kick is base 130. Whereas Low Kick is um yeah 130 and low kick is base 120 max damage and that's what it's going to be against lax and steela so that's really really good for me i don't have to you know predict him going for protect i don't have to like be fearful that i can just click low kick for free that's really awesome for me acro is fantastic for galade one shots get most variants galade um does a lot of damage to togekiss as well if i'm plus two i'm pretty sure i like one shot as long as it isn't like bold max um one shots close upon most forms and you know deals a rotom you know fairly well as well um so that's pretty good uh, like I said, this mod could do a lot of work in this team. It's just really risky because if I can't get this thing on terrain, like when terrain's up, then it's pretty much going to be worthless, which is really scary. But um, none, like, there's really no way it could do work anyway if it didn't have electric seed, if that makes sense. So like, I don't think a sub citrus berry set will help in this matchup at all. Maybe against Lax, but it's really hard to set up on Lax anyway because Lax hits pretty decently hard depending on the set. Um, so. I just feel like this is a big risk, but it's a high risk, high reward kind of thing. So, it's just something that I could see doing work early game or late game. Uh, one or the other, because if it doesn't do work, then I'm kind of screwed, honestly. But yeah, that's Roberto for you guys. Let's go on and move on to LeBron James, the Nino King. Uh, the King, of course. Uh, we are running a Sash Stealth Rock lead set. This is going to be my lead probably 90% of the time. The only time I probably will be hesitant to lead with it 
is if he does indeed bring the Galissapod. And I can I can see Galissapod coming for like a spike lead as well. It's also good to bluff his Z move because if he brings both of his Z move users, um, I can be you know guessing at a team preview and throughout the game. Uh, you know, I only brought my Coco, as you guys know, Rapid Ash is my Z move user, so he already knows that Coco will probably will be Z move and it'll probably will be a single tackle, so that's something I am k kind of afraid of. Um, but yeah, Rocks, like I wanted to bring Cloyster as well, like Hazard stack, because his only defog user is Togekiss, and Cloyster and Needle King beat Togekiss. Well, Cloyster really can't, unless you know it's running like not unless we outrun Cloyster. Um, so I did kind of abuse that. But it's just way too risky. Cloister would just be like fodder, essentially. Like, plus two Cloister does work on paper. But, like, it's just... It's really risky. And I feel like I don't think it'll I'll benefit that much from not doing it. Um, from doing it. So, I feel like just getting up rocks is good on its own. You know, good chip on everything. And, of course, he can't really defog on Nato King. He would have to, like, predict me rocks turn one and then come in. But then he'll take a free sludge wave. Like, a, a, you know, a sludge wave, which is not good for him at all. Especially for Hydreigon. You know, it could do work, open up the door for Hydreigon. So, I'm carrying Thunderbolt uh, just to hit Celesteela. It does a lot to Celesteela in terrain. It's like a, you know, over guaranteed two shot. Um, without Life Orb, it doesn't do that much damage. Without terrain as well, which is something that's kind of scary. But I'm going to just take that risk. Um, Celesteela, the best thing he can do to me is Earthquake if he carries Earthquake, which I do see him doing. I could probably see a Wakan Earthquake set coming to deal with Coco. I could definitely see that. Um, but he'd, he'd probably have to be invested in one-shot Coco, given my bulk I added to it. So I will keep that in mind throughout the game. I'm hoping it's just like a Protect Lead Sheet set. But I'm not sure if he's like the kind of guy to bring that kind of set. I think Protect, he has to bring it. I, I really do, because of how Lucha. But, you know, honestly, we'll see about that. Um, dual Stab is fantastic, of course. Earth Power is my check to Marowak. Sludge Wave, Togekiss is pretty much the main mod I needed for. Also good for Rotom C as well. So, yeah, just bread and butter kind of thing here. It's just Stealth Rock, you know. Just didn't want to bring a uh, Zelda Rocker. It's a good one here. And yeah, finally, we have no name to Jellicent, the glue to this team. It's the only dedicated wall I have on this team. Really risky because his team is very offensive, but, uh, you know, it's just the way I play. I want to play a little bit more offensively here. Um, so this is my Zygarde switch in as well, along with Mega Scizor. Uh, it's there to deal with Marowak. It can also be able to do damage to Gallade in case he's like, you know, a knockoff set, obviously. He'll probably will have knockoff to deal with. Well, he doesn't need knockoff to hit it super effectively. Like Zen Headbutt probably does a trick too, but knockoff probably will be his move of choice uh, to cover. Um, I mean, cover this, I would assume. So if he does go for knockoff, I can do at least at minimum Shadow Balls in 50% to a non-invested Mega Gallade, which is good damage. Good damage for uh, maybe Mega Scizor late game, or even Kapu Coco. I don't have to waste his even move and be fearful of it living. Uh, Ice Beam, of course, is for Zygarde, so I can't let it set up on me. Scald, of course, is to touch Sneasel, because obviously if Sneasel goes for a knockoff, I can get a nice Scald off on it, potentially burn afterwards. And if I burn Sneasel after a knock, I pretty much wall it at that point, so that'd be fantastic. I could recover on it, you know, and save this for another Sneasel answer. If I said Weavile, that's my bad. And, of course, Scald's there to hit the uh, right on it in case it shows up as well, just, just to be sure. It's an emergency. Recover, of course, you know, great recovery option for me in case I need to be able to recover on stuff. Um, so yeah, this mod really doesn't do that much like on paper. It's just a, it's just glue essentially um, It could be like setup fodder, which kind of scares me But like Zygarde is the number one sweeper on his team. So like it stops Zygarde. So I'll be alright with that. So um, It's also my Glissopod wall. I know Glissopod probably gets a dark move. I actually I'm not sure about that. Let me go ahead and check real quick um, This is just something else uh, I, I know it does. I just never looked at what the move was essentially uh, he gets dang pulse actually. He doesn't get crunch. I thought he got crunch. Sucker punch is all he gets. Oh, interesting. He gets fling, which is probably his best option too. Snarl, payback. You can see, I can see like a Z payback. Okay, sorry, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know the exact. I thought he got crunch for some reason. I know it's probably bad that I didn't know. Go, you know, 30 minutes prior to the game, but huh? But yeah, so yeah, Glissapod is walled by my no name, Jellison. So that's why I have it here on this team. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. His team is very scary, but, you know, breaking it down these past couple of days, it's really not that scary. My team could probably handle it, I think. I feel like there's some doubt in my Hydreigon and my Nido King sets, even um, my Jellicent set as well. But uh, I'm, it's, it's going to come down to either Roberto, the Scizor, or the Shaka Zulu to do work. Because, I mean, these are the three mons that, that have to do the work. They have to do it. These other three are just here to do some chip, essentially. And be some dedicated switch in, you know, Nido King and Nihaligo. Nido King for Nihaligo, this thing for Rotom and stuff like that. Those those mines that, like, 
you know, stuff like Rotom and, and, and um, Rhydon and Lax, those mods that are iffy on coming, I have the mod to check it with. So, um, this team does, I feel like, can do the work. I'm confident in the prep. I'm confident in my in my play, I hope. You know, I think I am, you know. Uh, I can't say I'm, I hope to win. I expect to win. That's what great teams should do. They should expect to win. Uh, I don't want to sound Kalki, but, like, he's a great battler. Greg is phenomenal. Make sure you guys go check out his channel. He's a phenomenal dude. Great, Very nice guy. Very cool dude. He's definitely up on the scene, up on the rise in draft league uh, format and stuff like that. Um, of course, he is the coach of the Los Angeles Cliff Abel. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the beginning. I should have, but uh, he's a really cool guy. So, uh, yeah, it should be a fun battle. I really do hope that I can put up a good fight this season. You know, if I go 0-9, so be it. Like, as long as I put up a good show, like, that's all that matters to me. I just want to be able to put up good content for the GBA fans as well as, you know, supporters of mine. So, I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you guys in the battle. Go Rangers.